Hello and welcome. This is Christian from Vision 6D. We are going now to see uh, how we can join a domain with an offline method. So you see here I have an environment in which I have a nano server which is here and that nano server doesn't have any interface with which I can interact. That nano server is described here. This is directly a shot from its recovery console. So you see that it's called nano one and it is in a work group actually. So what we want to do is to make that computer join the domain called formation.local. Here I have another computer which is called AD1. It is a domain controller, but in our operations here, we don't need this computer to be a domain controller. It could be just any computer. So what I'm doing here is with a window 2016 server that wants to join a 2012 domain. As an extension, you must know that any PC or any computer which is up from Windows 8.1 or Windows Server 2012 R2 can exactly follow the same procedure. So basically we do this in two steps. A, on a computer that is already in the domain, for us it will be 81, we create a computer in Active Directory. This will generate a file that we have to transfer to the joining computer. And for us it's Nano 1. And we will add the Active Directory information to that system. So step A that we have to do on AD1, which is the computer that is in the domain, we open a PowerShell window as domain administrator with the rights, and then we perform the following command. We will use djoin. And for this, we say to djoin, please provision, slash in the domain to be joined, slash machine, we give the name of the destination computer, which is for us Nano1, and we save the result in a file called blob.txt. So the step B is first of all to transfer the file, the blob.txt from AD1 to Nano1. And then we have to remotely to access Nano1 in a PowerShell command as administrator. And there we will use the blob.txt file to insert this in the Windows environment. For that, we use the command djoin slash request odg slash load file blob.txt slash window pass and then the system root as it is defined and slash local os. The last thing it's to know that once this is done, uh, if you want to see the result, you have to wait for the next restart of the computer or you just restart. When you transfer the file, you might have issues, especially with the nano server. So make sure your firewall is not blocking you. Uh, I will have a further video where I explain all the details about firewalling with Nano One. So make sure you look at that video. Let's now proceed to the practical part where we really see this in action. I'm in front of AD1, which is a domain controller. And it's from this system that I will do the join uh, of the new computer into the domain. So in order to do that, I will open as administrator a command prompt, that is to say a window PowerShell run as administrator here. I will now uh, key in the djoin command with the option to provision. And my domain is formation.local. The machine will be nano1 and I will save the result in a file called blob.txt. It's provisioning the computer. As a reminder, this could be done from any server which is in the domain or from any computer which is already in the domain. So we see here that the provisioning has been done successfully. And we see here below the file, which is the blob.txt. The next step is now to copy this file to the nano server. So in order to do that, 
I've done the following. I have here already a connection with the Nano One server, which is 192.168.1.51. Uh, I will detail here how I did the connection. You can find this in the video, which is the number two, which is manage a nano server through the PowerShell. So I let you go there and review the way to establish the connection. So now what I need to do it's to establish the, the connection to have access to the file storage on the nano server from my AD1 server in order to be able to pass the blob file. So I keyed in the access to the nano one server, which is here. I will now open the second window to go and grasp my file. So we see here that I have my blob file and I will just transfer it to the nano server. With this, the file has been transferred. I'm going back to the PowerShell that I have opened on the remote system. So I'm going to the same directory, checking if I can find the blob file. Yes, the blob file is there. Now that I am on the nano server, I will import in its uh, directory environment the local blob file. Let's now pass the command to load it. The provisioning request completed successfully, a reboot is required for change to be applied. So we can reboot it. As you can see here, the connection was interrupted, but the system has by itself attempted to reconnect. Now it's requesting from myself the password. The connection is now re-established. Now we see that uh, once we log to the recovery console, we can see that uh, the server nano one is here, well present, and it is part of the domain information.local. So as such, we can say that uh, we have now integrated our nano server in our domain. And I think from here, now you've seen the proceeding how to integrate a nano server into a domain with the offline methodology. I wish you a good time and I hope to see you soon on my channel. Don't forget that you can register and that you can sum up this video. So have a good time. See you soon. Bye.